This video is a public service announcement about the AMD chip swap scam. TLDR, AMD chips replaced with counterfeits inside authentic retail packaging. The seal is intact, the box is undamaged, but the chip is fake. It affects new units sold in stores, even a big name electronics retailer. It affects AMD 5000 series CPUs, which don't come with a CPU cooler. This video is the full demonstration of the swap technique on an unopened Ryzen 5950X retail box without breaking the seal or damaging the box. I have a condensed PSA video linked in the description. Hello. So, in a previous video, I demonstrated how you can remove the chip from the AMD Ryzen 9 packaging without breaking the seal. That was a simulation. This time it won't be a simulation. This time it'll be the real deal. This time we're going to be using a new box, a new Ryzen 9 packaging with the seal intact, holographic label, including the valid strip along the side. Authentic QR code. Box is undamaged. Serial number on the chip matches that on the box, as well as part number. One thousand nine six. So, what is our procedure? The method, as described last time, involves manipulating the inside or contents to affect a couple different things. The main thing is to create room to work. And you do that by reaching through the side. To grab this and deform it. Ideally, you want to pull it back and then again so that and then hold it so that you've got a lot of room to work with. Once you have that room to work with, then you can fold this flap down, open this inner container, push the chip out and then slip the chip out through the gap here, all without breaking the seal. Reassemble things inside, and that's it. So, how am I going to be doing it? Well, similar. Now, as I did last time during my simulation, I'm first going to protect the edges because the thing about this method is that it's hard on the edges and that can be a telltale sign. Also, these distortions in the packaging indicate, you know, that it's been worked a bit. Uh, if you see these, these are red flags, especially any tear in here, because you try, generally have to try to make a bit of a gap here. First, I will protect the packaging. Most importantly, I'm going to protect the seal, because the seal is ultimately what we're trying to preserve.
Now, just an FYI, since we're going to be working with electrical stuff, general thing you want to be doing when you're working with electrical stuff is avoiding electrostatic discharge. And scotch tape is actually pretty bad for that. Uh, in service of that, I'm wearing this ESD, electrostatic discharge protector bracelet, which grounds me. It's hooked up to the chassis of my computer, which is plugged in. And that should provide a neutral grounding. Just take that real nice. So that's extra protected. Additionally, I'll be protecting these edges because this is the edge that's likely to get worked up a bit. And if I can minimize the damage to it, I can maximize the effect I'm going for. Similarly on this other side, protect it. This is just plain old scotch tape, but uh, someone, you know, trying to work fast wouldn't necessarily have to go to all this effort. I know we're not taping over this part because we're going to want some give there when we're working it. But otherwise, yeah, I've got plenty of protective things. Go a little overboard. Because we only got one shot with this. I'm putting my money where my mouth is. There is risk the damage of the chip in doing this method. It may not be important for somebody stealing them, but since I paid my hard-earned money for this, I'd rather not run into problems. Okay. Uh, Put a piece of tape for later. Okay, so as stated, first things first, I'm going to be trying to manipulate this thing back. I could do this through this side of the box because you can't really push on this, it's designed to brace automatically while well, it's properly deployed so that pushing on it caused it to brace itself and strengthen. So what you need to do is instead of push, you need to pull. Pulling is much weaker. Pushing from this side. I need some light. Headlamp. Assist. See what's inside as I manipulate it. Not easy. Not easy goings. Obviously, it's not designed to be worked like this. other ones may be more effective. Uh, 
Oh, not getting it. I think something in my eyes. So now we have quite a bit of room to work with in here, which is the objective. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to fold this flap down. So we push the, the inner case as far back as it can go so that this inner flap can be folded down. That goes fairly easily. Now I'm just going to use a little bit of masking tape. Pull that down on the inside so that it'll be easier to work with so I don't have to constantly be holding it down. Okay, good. So now what we've done, just to illustrate, with this other box. So we pull this thing back and are sort of holding it back so we have this room to work with. And then I pull this flap down and tape it down so that it's not in the way when I'm going to be trying to fish the chip out. So now how do we fish the chip out? Well, it's in this inner packaging and that's kind of problematic because this inner packaging is, well, it's, it's protective. I mean, that's what it's for. It's protecting the chip. So before I manipulate that, give me a second. I'm gonna go wash my hands one more time. Just assuming I'm manipulating the chip and I don't want my hands to get Before I uh, fish the chip out, I'm going to spend a little bit of effort to make sure that I have enough gap to get it through. So I should be okay, actually. I could manipulate this thing probably a bit more so that it stays open, but I think I'm going to just uh, wing it. Don't recommend that, but that's what's going to happen. So this inner packaging, it's in there. The chip is in there. My expensive thousand dollar chip is in there. How do I get it out? Well, first I need to open up this thing. First, of course, my electronic wrist strap thingy. Definitely want that connected while I do this work. The long and short of it is, we're going to be opening the package up inside this thing. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. You just sort of pull the tab. So I just got to find that tab and pull it. And that's easy. 
and then the chip will just call out real neat likes. That's the idea. For all the marbles. Now the question is, could this be back anymore? Could I provide more room for myself to work with? Is that feasible? I don't think so. I think this is about as much as one can hope for. So let's get to it. Opening the chip package. This is the most dangerous procedure. And the chip is out. The chip is out. Now I just need to safely deliver it out without bending any of the pins, which is easier said than done. Okay, the chip is out. Chip is out of the package. Now I just need to deliver it to the surface. Chip is out, chip is out. Chip is out. Well, the tab is down. Why is it there? Okay. Why are you there? I take you down. It's supposed to be there. The chip is there. And the chip is out. Without any bent pins. Not a single bent pin. No damage to the package. No bent pins. Genuine AMD Ryzen chip. Now, all I gotta do is put my feet in for my trick. Trick or treat.
thus laid plans. Thus laid plans. We're definitely going with Jack o' Lantern. Slip our dummy chip inside. And get that into our package. Should be fairly simple. I don't even have to be that careful now because we got the chip out. like it to be right side up, so I will manipulate it to be right side up. It's going to be somewhat loose anyways, so it's not really a big deal. Right. Now, we just got to reassemble our package. So first things first, we need to move this guy back up. The tab, I mean, no, this tab needs to go back up. So, there we go. Looks like we've got our horizon stuff back there. So now really we just need to reassemble this inner bracing thing. And we do that by freeing this guy. So we don't really need to be so stable anymore. Hopefully we can just push it back. I don't know if that will work. Oh, it seems to be working, actually. Uh, maybe not. Let's manipulate. Oh yeah, no, it's definitely a little messed up. Let's 
and I'll have to tear the bracing a bit. This needs to go up. I'll do that from the other side better. Easier. Still kind of getting this all out of one top. So I need to fix everything with this one, I think. It may be not perfect. Maybe it won't pass every inspection, but uh, pretty well, it's good. So now I'll just reveal that everything's intact. Peel off this scotch tape. That probably helped, but another attacker might not bother with it. Especially since it's time consuming and can leave a bit of a residue, but not much residue actually.
Now we'll reveal the seal. Seal is unharmed. Perfect. Didn't even leave a trace of residue. So, as you can see, this method removes the chip, replaces it with a substitute. Seal is intact perfectly intact AMD holographic seal. with valid line. Very minimal damage to the package. In fact, there's less damage to this package than with the one that I bought that was counterfeit that had this little fellow in it with a sticker that said Ryzen 9 on it. So this method replaces it, seal intact, almost no damage to the box. Probably I could have improved the method and eliminated even that. And uh, chip is safely exfiltrated. The true test will be tomorrow when I see whether the system hosts and whether all the cores are functioning. But uh, overall, this has been a successful demonstration. So who did I make this for? I made this for other customers who've been ripped off, like I was. You may have bought your new processor in a new box with the seal intact from a, a retail store, new, never sold before, a big box retail store, only to discover that inside it's, uh, it's counterfeit even though the seal was intact. So you can't trust the seal. So customers, verify that the chip matches the serial number here. Part number and serial number have to match. Just authenticating the seal is not enough, even if the seal is good. You gotta make sure the chip, even if the packaging flawless, chip might be counterfeit. So this method uses authentic AMD packaging with the seal intact and substitutes the chip. So uh, who else did I make it for? Retailers. So you can beware of this, you know, either getting it from your suppliers or in returns. Just because the seal is intact doesn't mean the chip is good. For AMD, I think the main vulnerability in this package is this, this spacer thing. Previous units would have a cooler, I think, here, and that would uh, occupy enough bulk that you couldn't really manipulate the chip out of its inner package within the pa outer package and then slip it out through the gap in the outer package. That's a problem. Simple improvements could be to replace this this uh, paper auto bracing thing with some kind of solid, maybe a solid uh, piece of styrofoam uh, that would prevent this method from working because you wouldn't be able to manipulate the outer package within the inner package or the inner package within the outer package. There won't be enough room. That's probably why this packaging worked fine for previous versions that have a cooler. But for this version, it's not good enough. And that's, uh, that's that. So beware, even if packaging, the seal is intact and is authentic, even if the packaging is basically unblemished, 
as you can see, the only damage done here is this little bit of distortion to this top flap, but otherwise there's not a mark on this box. Even if the packaging looks good, the chip might be bad. Make sure that the look on AMD's site, they've got guidelines on how to spot counterfeiting or tampered uh, boxes. The main thing is to make sure that the part number and serial number that is here and determined by this QR code matches the chip. You also may want to look for signs of a sticker uh, versus the, the chip, which is this kind of laser engraved metallic sheen, whereas a sticker will be a lot duller and may uh, show signs of where it was applied, especially at the corners, there might be adhesive goop that shouldn't be there on a normal processor. So don't get conned like I did. Check your, make sure it's good before you open it. If you don't think it's good, return it and get one that looks good. It looks like it hasn't been manipulated. But as stated, with this method, you can get the chip out and substitute it without causing much mark at all on the box. I hope this is of use to people. I hope this helps both customers and retailers and AMD uh, eliminate this counterfeiting problem and to eliminate being a victim of it. Uh, thank you. Bye.